Hello Bio 2, continuing on with section 2 in chapter 25, we're going to look at how plants respond to some more different things here. So we're going to start right in with what is known as photoperiodism. So we have another long, interesting word to add to our list from this chapter. So we're going to look at what is photoperiodism. Kind of some example to help us exp uh, better understand what it is, is that plants such as chrysanthemums and poinsettia flowers and poinsettias they flower when days are short and therefore they're called short day plants so that's pretty simple they only will let their flowers show when the days are shorter so they are known therefore as short day plants and spinach and iris flower so spinach spinach and irises they flower when days are long and therefore they're known as long day plants so that's pretty simple and then and what this, the phenomenon that helps us understand this is that is known as photoperiodism, and this is the response to periods of light and darkness. So it's how plants respond to when it's light and when it's dark. And then photoperiodism in plants is responsible for the timing of seasonal activities such as flowering and growth. So they're like, hey, the days are getting longer, it's summertime, maybe I should do this. Or, oh, the days are getting shorter, winter's coming, so maybe I should do that. So photoperiodism kind of helps the plants decide when to flower and when to grow. And here's a chart again, just maybe how <clears throat> to kind of show when they flower <clears throat> versus the short day plants versus the long day plants. As you can see, long day plants, the blue are the... I'm sorry, the yellow representing when it's light out, so therefore it's going to flower the long day plants. And then we go over down to the next one, it's going to be dark majority of the day. And then even in the interrupted night, our long day plants will flower. So that's photoperiodism is the response of plants to light and dark. And it was later discovered that a plant pigment known as phytochrome was responsible for photoperiodism. So phytochrome, that's going to be an important word to know. And it absorbs red light and will activate a number of signaling pathways within plant cells. So it'll just kind of give plant, hey, you need to do this. And there's a lot of pathways within those hormones that we talked about that will help regulate this. And they will respond to regular changes in these pathways, and these changes determine the patterns of a variety of plant responses. So phytochrome kind of signals to the plants what they need to do based off the amount of light that comes in or the amount of dark that comes in, <clears throat> whichever one is present at the time, and will tell the plant what to do. And phytochrome serves another function, kind of segueing into our next little topic of this section. It will also regulate the changes in activity that prepares many plants for dormancy as winter approaches. And we said that seeds can do go dormant when they are kind of alive but not growing. And then dormancy in plants is a period during which an organism's growth and activity decreases or stops. So it's basically plant hibernation, and plant hibernation is controlled by this phytochrome. And then how do deciduous plants prepare for winter? So deciduous are, we are living a deciduous forest, and this is just the fact when, <clears throat> when plants lose their leaves, basically. Deciduous plants lose their leaves in order to help them pre prepare for winter, and that's basically all deciduous means. So as cold weather approaches, deciduous plants turn off their photosynthetic pathways so they turn off basically photosynthesis which occurs in their leaves and they transport their materials from their leaves to the roots and they seal the leaves off from the rest of the plant so they're basically saying leaves uh, you're really not going to serve us much of a function during the winter so we're going to get all of our nutrients away from you we're going to put them down in the roots and we're basically going to seal you off from the rest of the plant and then as a result it's something called leaf abscission occurs and that <clears throat> occurs when at the summer's end the phytochrome in leaves absorbs less light as the days shorten and the nights become longer. And then auxin production drops, but the production of ethylene will increase. So there's two new, or not two new, two of the hormones we talked about, auxin and ethylene. So those, auxin is going to drop and ethylene will increase. And these changes in the amount of auxin and ethylene start a series of events that gradually will shut down the leaves. So first step is chlorophyll synthesis stops. So the making of chlorophyll kind of just comes to an end. Light will destroy the remaining green pigment. Again, so the green pigment is destroyed. And then the other pigments, inclu including yellow and orange <coughs> carotenoids, is how you say that, carotenoids, another pigment, usually not 
usually is blocked by our chlorophyll. They become visible for the first time. And then the production of new plant pigments, the reddish anthocyanins, anthocyanins begins in the autumn. So it's just a new pigment being produced besides chlorophyll. And every available carbohydrate is transported out of the leaf as much of the leaves water is extracted. So again, going back to just that first point, this is just, these are all things that the plant does in order basically just to kill off the leaves. And then finally, an abscission layer of cells at the petiole seals the leaf off from the plant's vascular system. So a plant usually has, or a leaf has a continuum xylem, continuous xylem and phloem, and that's our vascular system, and that gets cut off before long. The leaf falls to the ground, and that's a sign that a tree is fully prepared for winter once we lose our leaves and that abscission layer is formed. Then the overwintering of meristems, this is another important thing that we need to take care of because our meristems are our new growing regions. So hormones also produce important changes in our apical meristems, and instead of continuing to produce leaves, meristems will now produce thick, waxy scales that form a protective layer around new leaf buds. So we said meristems can grow into anything they want, so now they're changing what they're growing in order to protect our new leaf buds. Then enclosed in its coat of scales, a terminal bud can survive the coldest winter days, so we have that thick, wa thick waxy layer for protection. And at the onset of winter, xylem and phloem tissues will pump themselves full of ions and organic compounds, and these molecules act like antifreeze in a car, preventing the tree sap from freezing, thus making it possible to survive the bitter cold. So this winter dormancy kind of went through this quickly, but there is a lot of interesting things that the plant does in order to make sure that it can survive winter. Again, it can't pick up and migrate like animals do. kind of just has to do what it can to survive and survive to the next year. So that's it for this section. Let me know if you have any questions.